Hello, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm Lori LeBay, the host and founder of Alzheimer's Speaks. For those of you that are new to our show, um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about us. Um, bottom line, Alzheimer's Speaks is an advocacy-based company that provides multiple platforms to shift our dementia care culture from crisis to comfort around the world. And basically, I started this company because my mom had dementia for 30 years. She started at my age in her mid-50s and lived till 86. And through her journey, um, she just taught me so much. It was just amazing. And the importance of collaboration and raising everyone's voice, including those with dementia. So we really believe that by joining forces and sharing knowledge and having these everyday conversations about life with dementia here on Alzheimer Speaks Radio, that we're going to be able to help remove some of the stigmas attached to memory loss. We're going to provide education, and we are going to be able to give people some hope. Um, this isn't all about doom and gloom, and there's a lot of good living to be done, uh, even when you're diagnosed with dementia or or have a family or a friend who's diagnosed with dementia. At our core, we, we truly believe that collaboration is the only way that we're going to win this battle against dementia. And I know that it's working because of all of your likes, your clicks, and your shares regarding our resources, not just the radio show, but the blog, the website, uh, the Dementia Chats videos where I interview people with dementia, our YouTube channel, all of these things you guys are pushing out. And because of that, we were recognized as the number one influencer online for Alzheimer's, according to Share Care and Dr. Oz. We were also recognized um, by Maria Shriver as an architect of change for humanity, which, you know, both of those I, I, we don't take lightly, but we know that they're not... Um, honors and recognitions just for us. They're for all of us. It's It really is about working together. I also want to mention that, you know, if you're listening here, you may have been touched by dementia. Maybe you're diagnosed. Maybe you're caring for somebody with dementia. Uh, maybe you work in the industry. Maybe you've written a book, a play, um, a song, a movie. Uh, maybe you're a researcher. There's so many different avenues out there. We'd love to hear your story. And again, Alzheimer's Speaks is about raising everyone's voice. So, you know, please let me know and um, and let's let's chat and uh, and see if uh, doing a radio show on your interests and your thoughts um, would be appropriate. I want to give a shout out to the Newman Long-Term Care Company. They are giving away uh, Maria Shriver's new Color Your Mind um, coloring book um, starting in August. They're going to um, have five copies that are available that they're going to be giving away. And, um, you know, you can just go to Newman Long-Term Care or you can go to our blog and get more information um, on Color Your Mind and uh, and kind of the sweepstakes for one of her coloring books. Um, I think you'll, they're really unique because it's not all coloring. They give tips with uh, dementia health and things as, as well. Uh, I also want to uh, just note that um, our special pricing for our dementia-friendly cruise and symposium is coming uh, coming up here pretty quick. We only have a couple of weeks left. So in once mid-August hits, that pricing is going to jump. And so you're going to want to lock in. Again, we are going to the um, Caribbean November 11th through the 18th. I have a wonderful team supporting me. Four people with dementia uh, will be speaking. Uh, Harry Urban, Michael Ellenbogen, Lori Shear, and Kathy uh, or uh, Mary Reed. And then I also have um, with me on my team uh, Cindy Lazinski, who is heading up the Northern Colorado Dementia-Friendly Community. 
and um, Becky Watson, who is a music therapist, and of course our travel agent, who is so wonderful, Kathy Schof, is also an RN. And the cruise is designed, the seven-day cruise is designed for people with early to mid-memory loss um, and their care partners and families. So it's really going to be a lot of a lot of fun. So if you have time, you know, come and join us. Now today we are going to be talking about um, something called the Footprint ID, and we are really lucky to have Beth Tofel, who is the uh, co-founder of Footprint ID, with us. And Beth herself, you know, was part of the sandwich generation, nestled in between caring for her own kids and participating in managing the medical and health conditions of her aging parents, and she totally gets. Um, the struggles that families have in this situation and the benefits of health information and medical history, having that right at your fingertips, um, especially, um, you know, when you're dealing with dementia. And that is really one of the reasons uh, the footprint ID, you know, had blossomed. Beth has spent 15 years prior to founding this footprint ID in leadership um, positions for organizations that focused on the needs and safeties of the community at large. And so this is going to be a really interesting conversation. I think one uh, that you're not going to want to walk away from. But if you do, they're all archived and you can always come back and listen. So Beth, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Lori. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm excited ex- to chat with you. Yeah, and I'm I'm really excited to um to kind of raise awareness of of what you're doing and and the importance of it. So one of the questions I always ask, you know, my uh, my um guests is, you know, have you been personally touched in your circle of family or friends um, by dementia at all? I have uh, through an extended family situation. Uh, we had somebody who had early onset Alzheimer's and unfortunately passed away at 56 years old. So that that definitely touched me and um, raised my own personal awareness of how it can impact families and lives. Wow, that is really early. I'm I'm sorry for your loss, but but I thank you for for sharing that with with us here. Let's talk about your footprint ID. What the heck is it? <laughs> well, in in its most basic form, footprint ID is a tool that helps you keep all of your health and medical information, as well as that of your loved ones, in one central repository, and have it accessible at all times from anywhere, and and that that's really the crux of it and, and our goal. And it um, very much assists in, in the caregiving arena, but but really also across a, a broad spectrum. So the information is, as, you know, can be as basic and is as basic, but important as prescriptions, allergies, conditions, emergency contacts, immunizations, family history, and things of that nature. But we also um, allow for unlimited document storage. So test results and documents can also be included and always available for everybody to access who's involved in the care of any individual. It does allow for effective and efficient help in an emergency when providing uh, you know, when visiting multiple health care providers or managing the care of un- other individuals or when you're away from home. And the way that we make sure that the information is always available from wherever you are is there's access via your web browser, a smartphone app, or we have a telephone support line which never closes 24-7, 365 days a year. And that line in- includes an emergency line for medical information as well as customer service support. And and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we are, of course, just as concerned about our members' privacy and security as they are. So we maintain HIPAA compliance and follow all the safety and security guidelines. Okay. Because that's... That, that, that in a, I guess, in, in a large nutshell, is yeah. what we are. Well, and that security piece is so very important nowadays with all of the hacking and stuff that's going on. I, I think a lot of people... Have started to kind of shy away because they're nervous on what people can find out, um, you know, with with different things. And and part of it is just being smart in terms of of what you put in there. Um, well, and- I I agree with you a hundred percent. And we have 
worked hard, very hard to balance the risk versus reward and make sure that we can accomplish our goal, but also reduce the, um, you know, the risk factors for our members. So, for example, we do not store social security information. We don't even ask for social security information or financial information. None of that is stored, which helps to take us out of um, some of the, you know, target group yep. for yep. hackers and things like that. Yeah, for for sure. Um, can you tell tell me, you know, what brought you to to found this company? I mean, for most of us, there's a tipping point, you know, and a lot of times it's a mm-hmm. personal experience that just goes, okay, it, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> so, I yes, I did have a personal uh, situation that occurred while I was thinking about the gaps in timely access to health information. And, you know, I was aware of that, as you mentioned, just by virtue of raising my own children and participating in my parents' health management. And what's interesting is my business partner, Jason Hubert, had also been thinking about this for some time. And during that time period, my 43-year-old brother suffered from a massive heart attack. Mm. Luckily, he survived, and I like to say he's as good as new. But When he was rushed to the hospital, he didn't have family members that went with him that um, were able to provide any information. So they were working blind. And of course, their primary goal was to save his life. And they, and I am, you know, couldn't be more thankful about, you know, what they were able to do. But when I arrived at the hospital and could share some information with his doctor, what his prescriptions were, what he was allergic to, what our family history was, which we do have family history of, you know, cardiac disease. Mm -hmm. So um, it really magnified the importance to me. And it was the tipping point for me to say to Jason, okay, I'm in, we need to do this. And, you know, he felt the same way. And there are just so many medical errors that occur because medical professionals have incomplete or inaccurate information. And and those errors can cost lives and money. Oh, you know, the it, when you bring up the medical errors, it just makes my stomach turn into a knot because I just remember going through different things with both my mom and dad. And you mm-hmm. know, that clear communication, and it's like, what do you mean you don't have that paperwork? I brought that paperwork in how many times, you know? But mm-hmm. a lot of times they just get lost in the file system, or it's it's not clear, or somebody else has a different interpretation, and it just, it oh gosh, it gets complicated really, really quickly. So I, I love this idea of, you know, as an individual being able to have have access to that information and, you know, because Mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, you're making notes and it it just, it it just gets really hard. Um, And so, yeah, so this is cool. And and especially in the transcription, which is why it was, uh, you know, critical to us to allow an individual to have unlimited document storage because it is, it is much clearer if you can upload a doctor's notes, upload a test result, upload um, a- anything that you don't have to actually, you know, rewrite or re-enter. So while we have the, you know, the user interface, which, you know, is extremely easy to use and user-friendly and when you're putting in prescriptions and other such things, that, that document section tends to be extremely useful. You know, this, your, your um, blueprint for this could be used for so many other things too. I just think of people going through the court system, if it's divorce or, you know, lawsuits Mm -hmm. or whatever, in terms of trying to manage everything. Um, Because it's interesting that you mentioned the divorce system, because one of the things that, you know, we have thought about in that you know, for that segment of the population is how many people now have joint custody of children. Mm -hmm. And one person is taking a child to the doctor today, then they're at the other parent's house and being able to all be on the same page with accurate information is, is kind of critical as well as you're right, you know, financial documents or, you know, and I, you know, we can talk about this but power of attorney and living wills and things like that, how it, you know, immediate access to that, Mm -hmm. you know, improves 
um, it actually eliminates a lot of stress, as I, I'm sure you are aware, when families are faced with situations like that. Well, even, you know, adult um, children, uh, you know, I've had a few friends where their kids have gotten in accidents, been in the hospital, mm-hmm. the parents are paying the health care insurance, and they can't get any information because there wasn't the power of attorney, there wasn't the health care directive for the child, and so they're, like, locked Correct. out. And, you know, if we can all li- live smarter in terms of this paperwork instead of being so fearful of it, um, and then have a system where we can actually track it, we don't have to worry about losing it, you know, where we can check in and access it when we need it. I mean, oh, my gosh, how sweet would that be? And, and you know, like with so Well, many- I think it's the goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, and with so many things, you know, you... It's one of those things you hope you don't have to use it, but if if you need it, man, it's life changing, you know, to be able to have access to to that kind of documentation. So, let's talk about the benefits of the footprint ID from like three different angles. I'd like to, you know, cover the caregiver, the the actual patient and then just as a as an individual um, on the whole, but, okay. but let's, let's start with the caregiver, you know, care partner, care companion, whatever you want to, however you want to phrase it. Let's talk with, you know, what are, what are some of the benefits to that person in being able to access this? Okay. So, for, you know, from a caregiver perspective, and again, you touched on a couple of things because we can look at it both from caring for, for a, a parent or caring for a child. And, and I will um, give you a couple of, of examples that apply to both. But most caregivers or many caregivers today are unpaid family members. And, you know, when it comes to the baby boomer, you know, they, it continues to grow. 10,000 individuals turn 65 a day. And we're, we're facing, you know, in incredibly increased demands on families, many of the caregivers who are still in the workforce and have time limitations. So, for example, let's say you have three adult children who are involved in the care of an aging parent. They're taking turns accompanying the parent to doctors, uh, you know, visits and one doctor adds a prescription, one changes a prescription, one orders a test, instructions are given. It's, It's very cumbersome to separately communicate that information and make sure that nobody gets lost or nothing gets lost in the translation. Mm -hmm. So by being able to keep it in the central repository, it helps tremendously when you have multiple people who are caring for one person. And sometimes you, you know, you may add a paid give paid caregiver into that equation for some or part of the time, and they're administering medications and things like that. So you want everybody, it, it's just very critical for everybody to be on the same page. Um, you know, when we, we speak about caregiving and, and you brought up the college student, which is is really a, a perfect example. At their age, they, of course, believe that they're invincible. And, and like you said, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that in, in, it's true. They do. And, and, and until the, it's the kind of thing that until you need it, you don't really understand that you need it. Yep. But we need to educate people as to how important it is so that they're prepared, especially if they're faced with some type of crisis or stressful situation, because in, in those situations, it's impossible to, to remember everything. And, you know, we had one member who shared with us that their, their college student went to the hospital. They were having a... a a severe, severe migraine, and to the point where they could not communicate to the doctor that it was okay to speak to the parent. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. as you mentioned, here are the parents on the other end, hours away, and they can't participate in, you know, any type of direction or, or conversation surrounding the care of their child. Mm -hmm. And that becomes very challenging. Yeah, very challenging and and very spooky. That the added stress with something like that is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, very very spooky. How about um, you know the benefits for the patient themselves to be able to have you know this system, um, you know this product set up mm-hmm. and in place for them. 
So we just had um, a member who shared with us that her husband, who's 40, um, was diagnosed with very early stage kidney cancer. He, they, you know, he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. That, of course, does not negate the fact that he had to have surgery and deal with everything associated with being a patient. Mm -hmm. And they chose to, you know, to get multiple doctors' opinions. Um, they had to choose a surgeon. They needed to prepare for the surgery, for the recovery, and, and all of those things. So as a patient, he was very appreciative of the, of the fact that his wife was so on top of, of keeping their Footprint ID memberships up-to-date, accurate, um, continuing to add the information in from one doctor's appointment to another. It helped them in assisting with asking the appropriate questions and making sure that upon his discharge that, again, he was um, cared for properly. So as the patient, he's expressed that it there was a tremendous comfort level and peace of mind for him. Okay. And, and I can understand that um, because we want to make sure that, you know, our, our wishes are, are held up and, you know, our, our best interests are, are at hand and, you know, you just never quite mm -hmm. know with stuff like that. So um, how about as just a, a general individual, um, how how do you see the footprint system um, helping them? Well, I think that the, I think that there are several aspects to that. To that, there's there's the in an emergency situation, which is huge. Again, an accident is an accident, or an emergency is an emergency. So we're not prepared or don't know that it's going to happen. And when that happens you can be treated more efficiently and effectively by a first responder if they can access your information. Mm -hmm. And there are also times, for example, in an emergency, if you are, if you're having chest pains, I'll give you this example, and they do an EKG. Well, there might be an abnormality in that EKG, but the reality could be that that's normal for you. Mm -hmm. So by having a prior EKG as part of your um, in your portal, they can compare it and it would potentially alleviate additional testing, additional stress for you as an individual by having to go through additional testing and things that are not even relevant to whatever the situation is that you're suffering from, as well as, as the costs associated. And, and I, I'd like to speak to, about duplicate testing just for a minute and share with you that there are some statistics out there that there, there are statistics, not some, that show that one in five radiology tests, for example, are duplicates because of a lack of prior test results and okay. prior information. When you extrapolate those numbers to the, number one, the health impact on an individual by being exposed to additional radiology, the cost factor involved with paying copays to have unnecessary additional tests and how it affects insurance premiums uh, as well as somebody's time um, when they're leaving an office or they're trying to manage the, you know, the rest of their life. It, it can be the, the savings and the impact on the health system is enormous. Um, so I, I just like to bring that up because it's one of the things that is a, a very uh, a point that is being very much focused on in the healthcare community. Uh, the other thing, in terms of just being an individual, we see a lot of people. There are urgent care facilities popping up all over the place. People utilize them instead of an emergency room. When you go to an urgent care facility, nobody knows anything about you. There can, you know, be many errors and many things that take place. Um, by being treated by someone who doesn't have your the full picture of your health background. That that's very true. That is very true. And again, a lot of this stuff you don't know until you're in it. And it and it mm -hmm. happens to you or it happens to, you know, a friend or a loved one and and that is and then you're just in shock. 
you know, and so right. I, 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 you know, one of the things too that I like that I, that I want you to talk about is your your ID system, you know, because right now there are there are other th- things where people can update medical information in their bracelets to wear with the U, U, USBs and mm-hmm. and things like that. But you have just a real simple card, you know, kind of the size of a driver's license for people to be able to access and and can you why don't we talk about the accessibility and why you chose the card format for people sure so our goal was to move away from the older theory if i have all my prescriptions on a yellow piece of ledger paper and crumpled up in my pockets then that means that i have it with me yep. and that also applies to having a USB or something of that nature because it's a a singular item that you're relying on. And if it's not with you, then it's as good as not having Mm -hmm. the information. So we, we structured our system to have these three prongs, which is something that really differentiates us from anyone else, which is the call center, the smartphone app, and accessibility through any web browser. Mm-hmm. You have the the medical the membership card which we advise our members to carry in their wallet right next to their driver's license and it very clearly states you know how to access information. But in order to address the private privacy and security concerns and balance that risk versus reward that we spoke about, we came up with two means of accessing your information. One is read only, so someone can see your information, and that's an assigned number that's on that membership card. Mm -hmm. So if somebody were to need to assist you or help you, they can see this is their condition, these are their prescriptions, this is maybe their allergies, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But nobody can change that information without a second layer of private password, uh, you know, and user ID and password. And we also have an audit trail for every change that's made. So it can be identified as to where it came from Mm -hmm. in order to address that. So, So that's why we created it in the way that we did, so that there was always access. I can share it with, you know, my, my child, I can share it with a friend, I can share it with a healthcare provider, but it doesn't mean that they are able to to change my information, but just assist me in an emergency or see the documents that exist. We also, one of the other things within our, our system is if you can have multiple family members on one account. But for example, as the account owner, I may want to be able to see and edit everyone's information. Mm -hmm. But I can assign each of the other members the ability to see and edit everyone's information, see and edit only their own information, or only or just see their information. So there are controls. So we can make sure that we are giving, you know, you don't need a 12 year old being able to make, you know, changes to anyone's account, Mm -hmm. but clearly, or anyone's information. So uh, does that answer the question in terms of the structure that you were looking for? Yeah, well, and I think one of the, you know, one of the things too is I, I hear so many people struggle with getting somebody to wear a bracelet, but yet they're used to having something in their wallet or their purse. And so it's just easier um, you know, and, um, and, and I think that it's still one of those things that would be checked by, um, EMSs, you know, if there's an emergency, they're going to, they're mm-hmm. going to just naturally look in a purse or a wallet, um, for information right. as well. And again, they wouldn't be able to access it cause they wouldn't have the, the secondary codes, um, with it, but you know, they know it's there. And I would imagine that there's some way to even as an identifier, if nothing else. Well, they can, right. They can, they can access it just to identify the things that they need Mm -hmm. with that membership card, Mm -hmm. but they can't, they can't edit any of the information. And, And to your point, yes, I believe that emergency responders are, you know, they're, they're trained to look in your wallet as the first thing that they do. And of course, fortunately, 
uh, more often than not, there is another person who is typically with someone when they are incapacitated and unable to speak, but there are a percentage of, you know, accidents and times and things that happen that they're not. And so we have to make sure that we can cover all of those scenarios mm -hmm. in the most effective way with, um, you know, with, with helping the individual as well as protecting them. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Now, um, you know, there are so many gaps in, in the system. Can you give some people an idea of, of why and how the footprint system can really help fill in some of those gaps? Maybe maybe share a story or two um, that our audience sure. can relate to. Sure. So we've all, as we visited healthcare providers, see the um, the benefits or, or certainly aware that most doctors have patient portals now that you can look at and see your some of your information. Mm -hmm. they, they don't always have all of it. And, and that's been terrific in, in terms of helping us with the accessibility. The challenge is that they are silos and they don't speak to each other. Yeah. So the gap is exactly that. Dr. A has this information, Dr. B has that information, and never the two shall meet mm -hmm. um, unless we do something about it ourselves. So to give you a, a story or an example, um, I'm trying to think of, of one that would cover that, that aspect of it. So somebody is in the hospital and, and um, they're being discharged mm -hmm. and they have discharge notes and, and that's of course all in the hospital system. And then not too long after that, they're visiting another, uh, another doctor. They're having a situation. They need to be diagnosed for something. And that doctor would not have access to perhaps uh, the, the, the follow-up treatment, the care, and the things that that individual is supposed to be doing or, or part of, you know, having as part of their caregiving uh, since their hosp hospital discharge. By not having that information, that new doctor can't treat that patient properly, can't really figure out what's going on. So that gap and the inability to know and have the information, unless we provide it, is is very clear. Um, I think that when we talk about, um, for example, tests and things like that, that's another perfect example. You you have a test at one doctor, the next doctor can't see it, so mm -hmm. that's a gap. So we we're trying to close that gap by allowing people to own their own information, empower them with their information, and educate them to self-advocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. being a, an advocate yourself is so highly important um, in this process. It's uh, everybody thinks that everyone else is going to do their job, and you're kind of amazed how many times it's not done in the fashion that you think that it's going to be or should be. And it's, it can get actually pretty darn scary. And so you really, you really need to be on top of this and you have to have a system that will allow you um, that information, um, you know, so that you've got it accessible so you can catch things. I, I remember a situation with my dad and, uh, you know, having to be an advocate where he almost died in the hospital because the doctor took him off a, a drug called Turkey. And, mm -hmm. and I had to go to the patient advocate in the hospital demand for another physician to come up and review the case because I knew he was dying before my eyes. And, you know, the, the nurse just kept saying, he's doing fine. And I'm like, this is not my dad. I know my dad. And, um, again, I didn't have the records, you know, and it would have been nice if I would have had those in a system where I could have reviewed them because I, then I could have just pointed it out um, mm -hmm. and been able to see it. But at that point, it was just the doctor 
who could do that. And, um, and thank God he came up and, and caught it. But, and it was just, it was shocking to all of us that like, you know, it's one of those, how could this happen? But how many times do we say that? How could this happen to, you know, situations that never should have occurred? And you don't want to be one of those, it never should have occurred situations. And none of us want to be in that Correct. point. And, and so I think that's what's so um, neat about your system, the footprint ID. Um, and I think that mm-hmm. to, to your point, doctors are also, you know, our, our whole healthcare landscape is changing dramatically. Um, unfortunately, doctors are very pressed for time. Mm-hmm. So is their administrative staff. And to the point of self-advocacy, like you just described with your father, um, if if we don't know the questions to ask, then we can't really help the situation. Yep. So by having the information, it, it helps us ask the right questions. It helps us identify when something seems amiss and is not what we're you know expecting. And there are a lot of hospital readmits that happen because even instructions when people are leaving the hospital are not clear. Mm-hmm. But within the hospital, you you hear, as you said, crazy things. And none of us want anyone to be one of those statistics, you know, let alone anyone that, you know, we, we know or, is, you know, is a loved one. Mm-hmm. But, we, you know, one of the reasons I have this passion is because I don't want to see, I, I want to do what I can to help eliminate as much of the errors, as many of the errors that occur that could be avoided mm-hmm. by having you know, access. You know, uh, we had a story, a sad story, with a, a a member who shared with us her mother went had an infection on her finger and went to an urgent care. Mm-hmm. She had no idea what prescription she was on. They gave her an injection for the infection. She didn't share with them any of her prescriptions because she didn't even know. I mean, she was alone. Mm-hmm. And it put her into cardiac arrest and she passed away. Oh. I mean, that's just unnecessary. Mm-hmm. It, it's completely unnecessary for things as horrible as that to happen. Yeah, but but they do happen. And, and they do. And people have to, you know, be proactive to correct those situations and, um, you know, because things are preventable. Yeah, yeah, it's going to take you a little time up front to maybe put some information in. But the amount of time it will save you if you run into mm-hmm. a critical situation or even just a normal doctoring situation, um, you know, or a referral to a specialist. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on, it, you know, how many times mm-hmm. it it will help. Um, in terms of, of ease the process. I mean, that's unbelievable. It's just absolutely unbelievable and, and definitely worth the time and the energy up front and, and to be able to do it when you're not stressed out, you know, um, right. There's a lot to people be said are ch- there. No, people feel, I think psychologically people, you know, sometimes feel the challenge of, oh my goodness, you know, entering all this information and what we really, you know, we try and communicate what you just did, you know, more articulately than perhaps I'm going to, but um, it's no different. You go to a doctor's office and you fill out their five pages of forms Mm -hmm. and what you're really filling out, they want your medical history. Mm -hmm. So you're doing it time and time again, um, remembering it, having to, go through that process once it's in the system you can print it out you can you have it available if you have to fill out the form but it takes five minutes for the for the basic information and then of course if you're managing a particular situation yes there is that extra effort that you need to put in to gather test results and things of that nature but it is well worth it yeah very much so. Very, very much so. So, um, Beth, let me ask you this. What, what is your, your number one goal that you have um, for the Footprint ID in terms of, of impact on, on people's lives and, and communities at large? 
Well, I think that we really would like to be able to improve health outcomes, help avoid extra stress on families and individuals, be available in an emergency, help people take ownership and control, and create a, and help create an environment where the the population can really feel less encumbered by some of the lack of of tools and and things that exist in our current system save money for individuals save money for employers by providing it one of the things that we do is we work with employers who provide this as an employee benefit why because there's a benefit to the employer and a benefit to the employee and it improves the health outcomes for for both sides there's a return on investment for the employer there's the um La it reduced or increased productivity for the employee, and there's a, a a a savings and an efficiency, which is really our primary goal is to create an efficiency for individuals and caregivers in managing and taking care of ourselves, and 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 knowing that, as you said, we need to take control and be there for ourselves and our family members and make sure that we each get the appropriate care, the care that we're entitled to, effective care, efficient care, and cost-effective care. Mm -hmm. Very important. What, what kind of feedback have you been getting from, you know, medical institutions and, and you know, hospitals and clinics and doctors and, and emergency professionals? So they love it because it makes their lives a lot easier. Of course, there's still a lot of education yet to take place in, in you know, that that's, this is a new and growing space. And, and that's one of our, you know, an additional goal that we have is to educate the population, both on the medical side and on the individual side. That being said, when we've experienced and had feedback from the medical community, they find it exceedingly beneficial. In the example that I gave you of the member whose husband was or just dealt with, you know, the kidney cancer and had surgery, the member was telling me how the nurses and the doctors were thanking her for having all this information so easily and readily available. It made their lives easier. It it made them make better decisions. It made them feel like they had accurate information. And it was a, a time reducer of, of time spent on unnecessary things where they could really focus on the care that they needed to provide to her husband. Mm -hmm. So very positive from the medical community. Challenging. Nonetheless, they're very, you know, I think that the medical community feels very challenged by the gaps in uh, connectivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and how could they not? I mean, they're going to see the mistakes far faster than anybody else, you know, out there and knowing what could have streamlined things and and um, improved, you know, the systems and, and uh, their care in general. So, yeah, I, I think this is very, very exciting. And um, one thing I, I'd like to have you talk about, because people are, I'm sure, wondering, well, how, what does it cost? What does it cost? Yeah. <laughs> can you can okay, you talk yeah. about that? that so I, I certainly can. And um, we believe that we are extremely affordable. And that was, we, you know, we built our model that way because we wanted individuals to across the country and even internationally to be able to benefit. So if you're a direct consumer and you were to purchase a pro the product, it is $40 for the first member for the first year with a $25 per year annual, annual renewal. And then we have a $30 for each additional member first year charge. And again, $25 each year going forward. So we believe that, you know, we're, we're offering a, a robust service 
um, for, you know, at a price that, you know, a large number of the population can, can, you know, fit in if it, if it's something that they can recognize and start to recognize as important. Of course, when we work with groups and employers and organizations, um, you know, we can create a mo- pricing model that works in, on a larger scale. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Well, I think that that's fantastic. And when you when you break down that cost, it really is minimal. Again, to you know the the time you're going to save, and um, mm-hmm. reducing that stress and getting better care. I mean, those are those are all pretty big benefits, um, you know, to the system. So I, I just I think that this is this is absolutely wonderful. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you feel is important for um, our audience to know? Uh, I think as as far as our tool, just to know that. Um, we were very focused on ease of use and clarity and, and things like that because we know how overwhelmed people can feel when, when they're managing their information. And um, I, I, I think that we really covered a lot of it. It's, it's just to, to be reminded how critical immediate and timely access can be. And and I think we we said this and, and talked about it a couple of times. We all at some point in our lives are in sitting in the chair where we think that could never happen to me, that could never happen to um, you know, a family member. But the reality is that unfortunately we don't know what hap- what's going to happen. And so to address these needs prior to being in crisis mode or stress mode is so incredibly helpful because you're able to just integrate it into, you know, as part of your life and part of the management of your life and your family's life. And it, it, it is there when you need it. And, and like you said, we're not looking for people to have to be using our app or our portal every day because that would be bad news. Mm-hmm. But to know that it's there when you need it mm-hmm. is tremendous peace of mind, whether it's for yourself, whether it's for a family member, a child, an adult, a friend, or anybody who, you know, you're involved in, in and, and care about. And things are changing. It's a scary time that we live in. I think that people are very concerned about their health care overall. And so we've really tried to be best of breed and robust. And of course, there, you know, in terms of other things that are out there, there, there are always, you know, some free tools, but they don't provide it. I think, I know they don't provide the depth and breadth that we do, and especially a very distinguishing factor, the, the live call center, where mm-hmm. someone will always answer your phone call and, and be there to help you. And how nice is that? You know, to be to be able to have, you know, because so many of us don't like, I don't want to chat with somebody on the computer. I don't want to, you know, I just, right. I want someone to walk me through this and give me my answer. Ex- exactly, <laughs> exactly. And whether it's, whether you're calling for emergency information or for customer service help, you know, if you're, if you're having, if you have a question or things like that, that that's why we're here because we want it to, we, we want it to be easy. We don't want this to be a challenge. We want this to be something that people feel good about, you know, using. I know for myself, if I go to a website and I start to struggle, the first thing I do is click off of it. And, and my partner who is on the technology side and his background is in automating systems and things like that both for large corporate and other, that was a very, very important goal of ours, which was the user interface being very easy to use. I used to joke and say, well, a two-year-old can do it. And then I realized they come out of the womb being able to use technology. So now I say an 82-year-old can do it. (laughs) Because (laughs) I had to change my whole you know, my mindset, um, you know, in terms of that. But um, we don't want people to feel challenged. We want them to feel good. We want them to feel like they're doing something that 
as I said, benefits their family and and their lives. Yeah. Well, and how nice for, you know, if if someone's got any kind of medical situation, it's it's just it's it's a calming effect to know that there's access in one place and that you're, you know, mm-hmm. if you are a person who is ill and is cared by uh someone else, it it's nice to know that you're going to reduce their stress by having this in place too. Because that's one of the things I hear all the time from from those who um, you know, have dementia. They they really worry about their care partners and want things mm-hmm. to be as simple for them as possible. And so, you know, having a system like this in place can can really, you know, add add value there and um reduce the stress and, and help everybody just stay a little bit calmer. You know, throughout, and I think that because you know, because we're such a mobile society, which of course you know has changed dramatically over the last couple of you know decades, we're, we're so mobile. Even to know that if you're managing the care of somebody, but you're not in the same place as they are, if somebody is. If you have someone who's caring for someone in your family who has dementia, but you're really managing and in charge of their care. If you are, you know, 3,000 miles away, you still have the ability to have the information to understand what's going on if there's a change and, and to be connected. And so that, that's a really important piece of it, that we don't necessarily have to all be in the same physical place in order to be effective in, in managing the care and making decisions. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Well, Beth, I can't thank you enough for um, developing, you know, this tool, the Footprint ID, and for taking the time this afternoon to explain to myself and our audience a little bit more about it. Is there anything else that you would like to uh, share with our our audience? I know we definitely want to give them your contact information, but if you have any last minute thoughts, this would be the time to do it. I think that uh, we covered everything. I'm sure I'll think of 12 things in 10 minutes but for now. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I think that we, we discussed all of the primary, uh, you know, that all of the benefits and all of the uses and where it applies to people's lives. And, and we, of course, at Footprint ID would be very happy to um, answer any questions that any of the listeners have that apply to their particular situation or how it might benefit them. So this is, you know, I hope was a a great overview, but, um, you know, I hope that anyone who thinks that this can positively impact their lives will be in touch with us. And, and certainly we're here to answer any questions. Okay, great. And people can just go to footprintid.com. That's footprintid.com or support at Footprint ID. Or you can get a hold of Beth directly at Beth at footprintid.com. And do you want to share a phone number? Sure, 855 374 3411. That is our uh, direct call line. And if somebody has a question directly for me, all they need to do is ask for me, and I will be happy to speak with any one of them. Okay. Do you want to give a, give that to us one more time, the, the, that phone number? Sure. 855-374-3411. Okay. Wonderful. Well, you have a great week. And again, best of luck with you and to Footprint ID. Appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for having me, Lori. Have a great day. For our listeners out there, you um, may want to check out our archives. We've been doing this for like six years, so there's lots of shows with great information. I do want to uh, just mention that our Dementia Friendly Cruise, November 11th through the 18th, we're going to be heading out to the Caribbean. We'd love for you to join us. Um, It's going to be not only a cruise, but it's going to be a symposium. And so we've got a great program lined up. We have four people living with dementia who will be with us as speakers, and that is Harry Urban, Michael Ellenbogen, Lori Shearer, and Mary Reed. Uh, also joining our team is Cindy Lazinski, who is heading up a dementia-friendly community in northern Colorado, and Becky Watson, who is a music therapist, along with Kathy Schof, who is our travel agent and also a nurse. 
You can find information out about our Dementia Friendly Cruise by just going to alzheimerspeaks.com. You'll catch it right on the front. And please note that um, all of your bookings need to go through Kathy Schof, and it will direct you right there as well. Uh, what else do I want to tell you? We just did a Dementia Chats uh, the other day that I posted, and it ha- had to do with the impact of social media on relationships. Really, really interesting conversation. If you're going to be in Boca Raton, Florida, I will be there uh, Wednesday through Friday. I would love to meet you, so just reach out to me, shoot me an email, and um, maybe we can grab a cup of coffee. Uh, I will also be in Maple Grove, Minnesota at Silver Creek on Main. We're going to be doing a free uh, screening of the film His Neighbor Phil. I think, I think, I think that that is it for me today. You guys have a wonderful week, and we'll talk soon. Bye now. Hi, everyone. This is Meredith from the Senior Fitness with Meredith podcast, where I discuss all things for seniors. From fitness, your health and wellness journeys, how to be all over strong and beyond. I also have my mini podcast called Motivation with Meredith. It's a great quick motivational pick-me-up for your days. Join me. Listen now. Search for Senior Fitness with Meredith on your favorite podcast platform.